suffered his only career loss here at the Armory in Minneapolis. It's PBC Fight Night on Fox. Super welterweight bout scheduled for 10 rounds coming up next. Down of the tape, Fodora, only 21 years of age, five inch height differential. Both boxers with an 80 inch reach. Fodora and Clark. Fodora has stopped his last five opponents. Five of Clark's last six fights have ended by a decision. To the ring we go for the introductions, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans, from the Armory here in Minneapolis, Premier Boxing Champions presents a special attraction in the ring, brought to you by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing in association with Sampson Boxing. Judging at ringside for this bout, we have Tim Cheatham, John Mariano, and Kyle Sheely. All right, fans, here we go. Super welterweights in the ring. We're scheduled 10 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, hailing from and representing his home of Cincinnati, Ohio. He weighed in at the super welterweight limit of 154 pounds with a fine record of 14 wins, only one defeat. He has seven wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the fighter they call the Quiet Assassin. Introducing Jamonte Clark. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. Standing at six feet, seven inches, he enters the ring wearing solid red trunks and fighting out of Coachella, California. He weighed in at already 153 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 13 wins, no losses, nine of his wins coming by way of knockout. They call him the Towering Inferno. Introducing Sebastian Fundora. And referee in charge now to give instructions. Introducing Mark Nelson. received my instructions in the dressing room. You both know exactly what I expect. It's a championship fight. Please, a championship effort. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Tonight's odds provided by Fox Bet. In our main event, Arislandi Lara is a minus 2,500 favorite. If you bet $100 on him and he wins, you win $4. Ramon Alvarez is a plus 900 underdog if you bet $100 on Alvarez and he wins you would win $900 Sebastian Fundora facing a southpaw a fellow southpaw for the first time in his professional career Clark telling us that Fundora is the fifth or sixth southpaw that he has faced so it's lefty against lefty tonight here in Minneapolis in the super welterweight division. And Kenny, that's a valuable experience for Clark. Now, whether or not it, 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 it is a deciding factor in this fight is another story, but it's a ooh, nice left hand by Fedora. But it's a huge advantage to have had experience with another southpaw, being a southpaw. You're normally fighting right-handers when you're a southpaw, and you have a distinct advantage because of that. Fedora's camp did bring in a number of southpaws to spar with Sebastian in preparation for this fight with Javante Clark. Now, I will tell you, it's hard to find 6-2 sparring no matter what weight you are, but to find 6-2 sparring for uh, Fundora uh, as a southpaw, too, is, is, a, is a real tall order. And, you know, I've watched Fan Fundora uh, box a couple times, and he loves to fight. He loves to mix it up straight away. As you can see, when he came out, he just came right after Clark. Well, you know, when we talked in the fighter meeting, he said, you know, because his big punch is that left uppercut, and I'm speaking of Pandora. And, uh, he, you know, he agreed that when you fight a southpaw or spar with it, he found it out in sparring, that you got to use that right hook more. And I think he's going to go to that tonight. Let's see if he does. But again, uh, Jamonte Clark is a very good fighter. This is not going to be an easy fight. You saw that sharp left hand Clark just threw there. But Pandora puts the pressure on like crazy. He just wants to get you. 
Clint Doerr is doing the right thing, starting out uh, everything with the job. He's just throwing a lot of jobs right now. Clint Doerr you know, did face a number of uh, southpaws during his amateur days, but this the first as a pro. Yeah, and there is a difference because the amateurs and the pros fight completely differently. Now, th that, that said, um, uh, Clark is uh, a very experienced fighter. He, he, he went the distance with uh, uh, Jason Rosario. He's a very good fighter. We've seen him fight before. And that was the only loss Clark has suffered back in August of 2018. Lost the decision. Not this decision. Uh, you know, these close quarter fighting, you know, I've got to give the edge to Sebastian right here because I know he loves to fight inside. I've seen him do it many times in, in different fights. I agree. And it's kind of weird for a, t a tall guy like this to be, you know, happy to box inside. You know, most tall guys love to box from the outside, but he loves to mix it up. Yeah, there are the rare occasions, and this is what you've got right here, is a tall, thin guy that doesn't mind being on the inside. Five-inch height differential. Fudora, six foot seven. Clark at six two. Ooh. Oh, nice right by Fudora. <laughs> Round one comes to an end. There's Sebastian with Lennox. <laughs> I heard you ran into him at breakfast this morning as well. Yeah, he gave me a great place to have breakfast, so I actually met him and uh, bought him breakfast. So Sebastian's a foodie as well, giving out tips on where to eat here in Minneapolis. Oh, well, that was a nice hard left hand over the top from Jamonte Clark that landed somewhat solid uh, for Dora. And he's got to be careful. you got to be careful of that. Keep that chin tucked and that jab going and keep it up high so you don't uh, get clocked over the top like that, like you just did again. Yeah, jamonte has got good movement. I love the way he's moving around the yep. ring right now. He's not being no, no sitting target. Which is which is a good thing. Who did you feel Lennox had the edge in round one? Uh, I think it was pretty close. Um, you know, when it came for the inside fighting, Sebastian, uh, you know, was leading the way. Well, one thing's for sure is nothing is really discouraging Fedora from coming forward, and he, he, he's smart to use the jab like that because that can stop that overhand left that uh, Clark is using. Of course, Clark just made a nice slip. Yeah, good combination. And came back with a nice combination. So look, you know, Clark's an experienced guy. He's got more fights, and Break he's probably fought the better opposition. A look at the total jabs thrown to this point. Clark won the national PAL title back in 2011, turned pro at the age of 19. Record of 14 and 1. Seven Ooh. wins coming by a knockout. Big right by Fedora. And a smile on his face as we usually see throughout his fights. Well, we've seen Fedora fight quite a few times. And this is the first time I think we've ever seen him use a jab like this. Lennox. Yeah, I mean, that's what he needs to do. He needs to use that jab. Because what he does, he's, you know, it makes the ring a lot smaller. There's that left uppercut that... Fondora, Fondora uses that so effective and so strong. <laughs> that left hand there. You have to remember it's a long jab as well. Yeah, the, the funny thing about it, the 6'2 guy has the same exact reach as the 6'7 guy. Right. Both have 80 inch reaches, as Kenny pointed out earlier. And it's the longest reach Fondora has ever faced in his professional career. This is a big step up. Look, I mean, the, the, oh, left oh. side Clark. Yeah, good left. Well, just as I was saying, this is a big step step up for Fundora in, in talent and competition. But you know, it is a ten round fight. And Clark is electing to hold anytime they get close because he doesn't want Fundora to be punching inside. Well, he's seen him. He's seen him at work before, and he knows that Fundora can do damage on the inside. But you know. Clark is using up a lot of energy moving like this. this is now Fedora starting to rough him up right now. Time winding down in round two. Lamonte Clark connecting with a left hook. Back in Minneapolis, Kenny Albert. Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, and Heidi Andrel just underway in round three, scheduled for 10 in the super welterweight division. Sebastian Fundora, Jamonte Clark. Fundora in the red trunks. Total 
punch has landed pretty even to this point. Get your hands free, guys. Hands free, man. Lennox, how did you score round two? Another close round, another close round. I think uh, Sebastian won that as well, but uh, Jamonte Clark came through with a great punches. He, he, was ca he caught Sebastian on his way in. And this is what he has to worry about when he comes in so fast that Javante is going to be able to throw a good combination and catch him. And, you know, he's getting caught with the jab coming in. You know, he's basically stepping in a bit too close. He needs to block that jab before he throws a punch. Well, I got to tell you, they're whipping really hard punches. Uh, Javante Clark is really throwing some nice, sharp counter punches. Look at that. He slipped nice, moved his head, sat down low, got off the ropes. He's really fighting a smart, smart fight against Fundora. Now, I, I, I got to believe Fundora's going to catch up to him because he's putting on extremely hard pressure. Listen, don't he's, and that's good. I'm glad the referee that. called that. There's nothing worse than getting hit behind the head or doing that. Now, that being said, Fundora is really putting on a lot of pressure. If you look at him right here, he's going to get in close. He's going to start landing his harder punches, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens if Clark can stand up to that. Scheduled for 10 here in Minneapolis. Good jab by Fondora. Then he landed a little left up again there. See, he's really putting the pressure on right now. You know, that's what I call putting a guy on the run. You know, he, you know, you might call it boxing. It is boxing. But then when you put on that real hard pressure, you put the guy on the run. And then it's, it's almost like praise. And uh, that's what Fondor is trying to do right now. But Clark is being real smart, and I think he's counterpunching nice like that. If I was in Clark's run. corner, I would be telling him to, hold, you know, hold his ground a little bit, stop and throw that, you know, left-right, the right-left. Right now, it's the, it's the battle of the Jacks. Time winding down in round three. Laura getting set to enter the ring against Ramon Alvarez in our main event later tonight. Our Twitter fan poll, who would you like to see the winner face? Sebastian Fundora, Monte Clark, just underway round four. Our Heidi Androll is with Sebastian's father, Freddie Fundora. Thank you very much, Kenny. Well, Sebastian really was starting to put on the pressure there, Freddie, in the third. What did you tell him going into the fourth? Just keep, keep, you know, keep working this guy. We want this guy to keep moving, moving. Yeah, he's, his leg's about finished. Thank you so much. All right, Kenny, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Heidi. Well, it, it, it's kind of confirming what we were just talking about, that he's putting the pressure on, and he's making, he's putting them on the move. He's putting them on the run. And when you do that, you, you get use up a lot of energy, and that's what Fedora's dad is looking to do right here. But in the meantime, you still have to score punches to win these rounds and make it obvious that you're winning the rounds here. Oh, big left by Clark. Clark has landed that several times tonight. Yeah, and that's because Fedora's dropping that right hand when he jabs. He's, he needs to bring it right back to his face so he doesn't leave himself open. And see, that's the thing. When you fight a southpaw, and you are a southpaw, the power hand is in the left hand that will come over your jab. Unlike if it's a right-hander, it's completely opposite. You don't have to worry about that side as much. We mentioned Clark Shepard has only lost right here to Deshaun Rosario back in 2018. Not only did Fundora fight on that card, but his corner was in Rosario's corner. When he handed Devante Clark his only loss. So Fedora's corner has some experience going up against Devante Clark. Yes, they do. Now, Fedora about 10 seconds ago landed a nice left hand. And I think it kind of stunned Jamonte for a second here because it really put him on the run and stopped him from doing what he was doing. He was kind of looking to do some damage. Score, Marcos Viegas. Marcos, how do you see it so far? This is a really close fight so far, Kenny. I have a 29-28. You know, I'm watching this, and both fighters are throwing a good amount of jabs, scoring points. I think either or, if they start doubling up on the jab, 
they'd have more success. And for Fundora, he needs to move his head a little bit because he's getting tagged with these punches and, and they're clean, clear scoring blows. All right, thanks, Barco. So 29-28 in favor of oh. Fundora. There's a nice right by Fundora. Yeah, Fundora landed two straight left hands and then finished it with a hook. And it's what we talked about in the fighter meeting. He's got to go to that hook a little bit more. The left hand is going to be hard for him to land right away. He, he hasn't been landing it tonight. And Clark needs to switch up his movement as well. He's just moving to one side. He needs to move both ways. Obey the bell here. And here you see Clark coming over with a good overhand left, catching Fandora on the top of the head. And this is where Fandora has to be careful when he when he throws his jab, it's dropping. All right, here we go. And, and, and we're in close quarters here. They both throw hooks, bam. And Fandora landed first, of course. Let's head over to Heidi Andrell with Clark's trainer, Kevin Bedford. Heidi. Thank you very much, Heidi. Oh, yeah. Kevin, I heard you say to Jamonte entering this round that you had to make some adjustments. What did you tell him? Well, I told him, um, we're going to take this kid jab away. Every combination he's throwing is led with a jab. We're going to take his jab away and start countering off his jab. He's been aggressive with the same jab. He's getting hit with a lot of clean shots, too. So we're going to take his jab away first and foremost and try to land some hard shots with the catching with his hands down. Thanks, Kevin. Kenny, back to you. All right, thanks, Heidi. Clark at round four landed a fight high 18 punches. Fundora in the fourth round landed his fewest punches to this point, only eight. And while Heidi was in the corner, Clark landed a really nice straight left hand to the body and uh, a, a couple other body shots. And he's really fighting a smart fight right now. Uh, and I don't see his legs getting tired right now. To tell you the truth, I think he's in tremendous shape. And I think they're fighting a really smart fight. <laughs> We heard from Freddie Fundora earlier, Sebastian's father. Clark also has his father, James, in his corner. Yeah, Fundora has to do something different, especially with his head. You're right, move his head a lot more because he's getting caught on that last punch of the combination. You know, when Clark throws a three-punch combination, that last punch is always catching Pandora. This is round five, scheduled for ten. In the super welterweight division, the unbeaten Sebastian Fundora at 13 and 0. Javante Clark with a record of 14 and 1. See, Fundora, you know, he's kind of following uh, Javante Clark around the ring. He's putting pressure on, but he's letting him slide out, but just like that, and get on the outside of him. You got to be able to shuffle left and right, left and right as Fundora, like just he just did right there to get him trapped. Yeah, yeah, to cut off the ring. Right, to cut off the ring and keep him centered. So, you know, if he keeps doing that, he'll he'll, he'll get back in this fight. But right now, I gotta tell you, I think the smarter fighter right now is Jamonte Clark. A look at Ramon Alvarez in his locker room getting set for our main event. He will face Aroslave Laura. Ramon, the older brother of Canelo. Pandoria has to be really careful. And here you see Clark connecting some more. You know, he's, he's, he's gaining the confidence right now. He's throwing a lot more shots, especially that right hook is coming along. And as you guys talked about earlier, Fundora likes to fight in close. Clark has done a good job in keeping him away. 87% of this fight has been at distance. Big left hand by Fundora. That's the first big shot that he's really landed on Clark, and he's got him a little buzzed right now, I can tell you that. Oh, he's got him holding. Oh, now they're wrestling a little bit. Oh, and now they both go down. But, but see, that was initiated by Clark. He grabbed onto him, he threw him, and turned him, because he was hurt. He got stunned. Stay there. Keep the fight clean, guys. Time in. Here we go, there's that chopping left hand right there. You look at the bottom of the corner and then front door. That's after he had him hurt. Now Clark is trying to get get a hold of him and, and really wrestle his way out of danger. 
See now, now Pandora senses that he's got him hurt this round. And he probably feels, and his corner probably feels, he's a little behind right now. And they, they got to do something to turn the tide. And that's exactly what Pandora needed with that big left hand. Pandora has to be careful when he's coming in like that because Clark is still dangerous. Well, the bigger puncher, I think the harder puncher between the two men is Pandora. But, but Clark is a sharp puncher, that's for sure. But I think if anyone gets hit with a big punch and gets, is going to get hurt, it's going to be Clark. A look at the total punches landed and thrown here in round six. Pandora with the edge. You know, we've seen Pandora take some clean, clean shots from Clark, and he's really taken them well. Uh, Clark has done a good job of getting out of danger here. Oh, good counter shot by Pandora. Clark threw a left hand. Pandora came back with his own counter. Pandora's starting to land some really solid shots right now. Oh, the, the left by Pandora. Yeah, he caught him on the gloves. It wasn't a clean shot. It wasn't. Once again, let's check the scorecard of Marcos Villegas. Marcos. Kenny, I got it 48-47. Uh, Clark had some very good last two rounds. I felt he was countering well with uh, Fedora coming in and not moving his head or waist uh, too much as he's getting a lot of punishment this round. So far, I have Fedora up in this round, but overall, 48-47 for Clark. All right, thanks, Marcos. Do you guys agree? Well, I mean, look, I agree it's a close fight, and I agree you could have it one point one way or the other. But right now, we're halfway through the fight. We're in the sixth round. The tide is starting to turn a little bit. If you thought Jamonte Clark was having his way, uh, it's now turning of the opposite way right now with Fedora. So we'll see if he can sustain it, or Clark can come back and take the momentum back into his, in his direction. Fedora has never fought past the sixth round in his professional career. He doesn't look tired at all, I can tell you that. Clark heading for his corner. All right, this is round seven, scheduled for ten. In the super welterweight division, Sebastian Fundora and Javante Clark. Well, I, I got to tell you, I, I like what was being said in the corner there with Ben Lira uh, and, and Freddy uh, Fundora. You know, the bottom line is I think they sense now the tide is turning. They heard... Uh, Jamonte Clark with a big left hand of that last round there. He just wasn't that one by him right there, too, Fondora is. But look, there he comes Clark, right back, and I think he just stunned uh, Fondora with that left hand. He's hitting him low on the leg on purpose. The ref is on one side, and, and Clark is hitting Fondora on the right leg uh, when he was blocked, uh, when the vision was blocked to the referee. And I don't like those type of moves. There's no reason to do that. You know what I say, if the, you know, if the ref doesn't warn you, I'll do it again. Well, you know, that's one thing if it's an accident, but that was a purpose pitch. He actually hit him on the thigh for no particular good reason. So you don't teach that to your boxers, Joe? Pardon? You don't teach that to your boxers? <laughs> no, no, but see, I would have caught that, and I would have been yelling at the referee right now if I was in Fundora's corner, because I would have caught that. Now... Clark needs to be a lot straighter with that left hand. You know, Pandora can see it coming. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. And, and that's the one you were looking for right Yeah, That was a nice short straight left hand. I know he's whipping it over the top a lot, but I gotta tell you, he came out early this round, Clark, and he, he whipped one over the top, and it really, it stunned Pandora a little bit. Pandora fighting into the seventh round for the first time as a professional. Well, time's a wasting, uh, you know, I don't know what the judges might be thinking right now, but this is a very close fight. And if I were in the corner, I'd be concerned. I'd be really trying to get my fighter, if uh, if I were Fondora, I'd be a little bit concerned that we might be a little bit behind. And I'd say, you, you gotta hurt this guy. You gotta get out there and do something and really impress the judges right now and, and, and hurt this guy, put him down or stun him. Yeah, go back to that job. You know, he's doing well with the job. He's gotta go back to it, like he is. Eris Lobby Laura getting set to face Ramon Alvarez at our main event. How do you guys feel facing the Southpaw for the first time has affected Fudora tonight? I well, think he's affected him a little bit because, yeah. you know, he's getting caught with some shots, and that that shows you that he's not used to the punches coming from that angle, and you can't see yeah. them sometimes. Not only is he getting caught with some shots from a Southpaw uh, stance, he's also missing some of the punches that he would normally use against a right-hander and be effective with them. 
and it, it's really not working against the southpaw because the, the shoulders are turned in an opposite direction. It's just very hard, and he's learning on the job tonight, I can tell you that. Time winding down in round seven in Minneapolis. Back in Minneapolis, PBC Fight Night on Fox. Kenny Albert with the champ, Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen. It's been a, a very entertaining fight, a close fight as we head to round eight. Close fight. Both guys uh, are coming with it and throwing some great shots. Fan Fandor's uh, throwing some good uppercuts in there in that last round that I liked. Yeah, look, I mean, I, this fight is up for grabs right now as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, we're coming down the stretch here. Whoever pulls these next few rounds out and wins them is going to win this fight. I think it's that close. Conditioning should not be an issue with Fundora, although this is the deepest he has gone. He trains at altitude. He travels six hours round trip every day, three hours each way. Trained at altitude. And for Clark, he's gone the distance 10 rounds in each of his last two fights. <laughs> A look at the total punches landed. Clark with the edge. You know, Clark was throwing some good left hands to the bodies. He hasn't, I haven't seen that for a couple rounds so far. So he should really go back to that. Clark landed a, a fight high, 23 punches in the last round in round seven. You know, you're right, Lennox. You know, Clark did go to the body. Well, it's one thing I think that's really been missing from Fundora's attack here is uh, body work. He really hasn't done it. He's been headhunting most of the night. When you get a guy along the ropes, they, they can't go backwards. They can go only left and right. And that's almost your cue to go ahead and try to get those body shots in. And he hasn't really done that tonight. No, he hasn't. No, he ha even, w even when Clark moves to the side, he's got to step over a little bit quicker and throw combinations for that side. See, right off the jab, he's moving right into that left hand of the body. See, you know, uh, Clark is expecting the left hand of the head coming as he's moving in that direction right now, but hit that body with that left hand before he escapes. I agree. I agree with that. Uh -huh. Now Clark shuffling. Good left right. hand. Sorry, Kenny, but that was a really nice left hand. Great so much. You know, Clark mixed up his movement there but he got caught yeah he but did. that was good movement that's what he needs to do move you know not move one way move both ways right we saw him shuffling around the ring and then he put on the brakes and yeah. then in the other direction clark's letting fondora miss but he's got to make him pay but this is the round right now fondora is winning this round and this is an all important round right here this is the eighth round you get eight nine and ten and if it's a close fight, you cannot give up the eighth round, ninth round, or tenth round here. Nice left hand by Clark. But I, I, I got Fedora actually winning this round through his aggressiveness and the, the nice little punches he's landed to the head. Thirty seconds remaining in round eight, scheduled for ten. Fandora needs to pick up that right hand a little bit more. See. Oh, Clark's corner was calling for the one-two, and, and Clark threw the one-two, and it caught Fandora. All right, here we go. We, we see Fondora chasing Jamonte Clark. Here's the left hook, and here comes the sharp right hand, or left hand, I should say. And that landed. And then here we go. Again, he uses the same thing. Same punch. There it is. Nice left hand. Four. And that, left, that right hand is getting more on his hip. So you've been throwing a lot of overhand. Change it up and start throwing some straight. Good one, two. Pop, pop. Then drop it down. One, two, horn. Pop, pop. Then drop it down. Got two rounds to go. Two rounds to go, baby. Two rounds to go, baby. Let's go. I need these two, all right? I need the hey, Slim. I need these two rounds, all right? I need these two rounds, baby. That is the
look at Harris Blondie Laura keeping a close eye on Sebastian Fundora and Javante Clark. Clark got some great instructions from his corner right now. Of course, they understand exactly the importance of the last two rounds. He goes, I need these last two rounds, and I need a straight uh, left hand from you. Now, I will tell you, the reason Fundora got clocked with that left hand at the end of the round is because he stood back and waited. When he's coming forward, he's being, and being aggressive, he's being much more effective. But you see right now, Clark is actually holding his ground right now, taking his corner's instructions and then doing well on the inside here. He knows, his corner knows he needs these next two rounds. Both guys need it. A look at the punches landed to this point. Clark with the edge. The and the final punches landed and thrown. Clark landing 31% from Dora at 24. Let's check in once again with Marcos Viegas. How have you scored it over the first eight? Let me tell you, Kenny, this fight is very, very close. I have it a draw at this point, 76 to 76. It could be a, a draw. It could go one point Pandora, one point Clark. It's really, really tight. And, and these last two rounds, both fighters need to be urgent because the fight's in the balance. Yeah, and, and Mar Marcos has been pretty pretty accurate, I think, for the whole fight, right? I don't disagree much. I only disagree with that last round. I thought Fondora won the last round. I thought the only significant punch by Clark was right at the end of the round when Fondora stood back. Otherwise, all the work was done by uh, uh, Fondora. So th that may be a, a point of contention. But again, uh, I, I, I think it's a tough fight to, s to score no matter who you are. How about you, Lennox? Yeah, that fight? Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty even, you know, uh, when it comes to both boxers, I would say Clark has been throwing some great body punches, and Fandor has been throwing some good uppercuts. Well, we got one minute left here in the ninth round, a a and it's a great fight. Right? Oh, great left right hook by uh, Fandora. And, and Laura's loving it, of course. You know, this, this kind of gets you into the kind of gets you into the mood watching other guys go at it and realize what you're going to be doing in the next few minutes. But uh, again, this is a very tight round. Uh, I thought uh, uh, that Clark, you know, did well in the beginning, and now Fedor is coming on to take the second half of this fight. Harris Blondie, Laura, and Ramon Alvarez coming up in our main event from the Armory in Minneapolis. I should correct myself, second yeah. half of this round. Yeah. Clark, Clark is waiting for his opening so he can throw some punches right now. Well, he knows there's 10 seconds left, and he wants to steal the round here. The guy who finishes stronger might win this round. Made the foul here. And Dora needs to he's take a little step back and throw his punches. Oh, that was a late punch. Obey that bell, man. Yeah. Not tired of it? Nah. Just be small with your feet. Sigalo, don't go back for nothing. Nice job. Okay. Start on both sides. You see how it's opening up the last shot? Start on both. Yeah, yeah. Start on both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start on both sides. All right. Do what you got to do, okay? All right. Let's go. Let's start out boxing smart first, all right? Okay. All right. What we've been doing, keep boxing smart. Punch after the bell at the end of round nine thrown by Javante Clark. Punch close, guys. Good luck. Punch and close. in the corner of Fondora, his father told him, don't back up for nothing, he said. And, and I agree with that. He needs to really win this round. And in the Clark corner, they told him to box. Box nice. But uh, they may box nice in the first half and then try to try to come on hard in the second half of this round. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But this might be the deciding factor in this fight, this round. Tenth and final round. Clark has gone the distance in five of his last six fights. As Clark slipped a bit, we mentioned Fedora had never fought past round six prior to tonight. This is a good fight for Pandora. Yeah, this is a great fight for the fans. It's a great fight for me. I'm loving this fight. It's really a tactical fight with two really sharp guys that are looking to take the next step forward to become champions of the world. So yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a really interesting fight. This last round is a chess match. Who can score the most points? Who can look good? 
Well, Hondor is not doing what his father told him. His father told him he wanted him to press. Don't back up for nothing. And, and I think if you want to really impress the judges, you got to be the guy that's being aggressive. See, yeah, by so laying back, he just got cracked with the left hand by Clark. Yeah, but you can get cracked as well going in. Well, you know what? He's got to go in smart. But that hasn't happened smart. yet this round. He only got cracked when he was waiting. He's waiting He's waiting for the last so he got part of the round. Again. He, he, look, he's got to put his hands up and get on. He does. Clark catching Fedora with a couple of lefts here in the 10th round. They both have their fathers in their corner, Freddie Fudora and James Clark. Fudora unbeaten at 13 and 0. Clark has lost just once in 15 professional bouts. Fudora has to get back to that jab if he wants to do something. Well, he's got a minute to do it if that's the case, but you know, he's got to land something more than a jab to really take this round. Because right now, Clark has landed the better, bigger, harder shot. Well, he's allowing Clark to take this round away from him, just moving away and catching him with some points. Yeah, but the deciding factor with those two big left hands. I mean, if you have to separate what's been going on this round, the two big left hands by Clark is the deciding factor. If I was in the corner, I'd be going, hey, we are not winning this round because we got cracked with two hard shots. That counts for something. Down to the final half minute. Fifteen seconds remaining. Another big left hand by Clark. I tell you, he's fought a brilliant fight tonight. Really, really smart tactical. Yeah, he, he did. He got caught with a left hook, left hook right there. Yeah, he did. Dora and Clark go the distance in Minneapolis. Well, the excitement looks more in the Clark corner than it does in the Fundora corner. Clark is very happy with his performance. Yeah. His corner's happy with him as well. Devante Clark and Sebastian Fuldora entertain the fans here in Minneapolis. Big left by Clark. Fuldora connects. They go the distance. Ten rounds. Back inside the armory as we await the decision. Sebastian Fuldora. Devante Clark, we check in once again with our unofficial score, Marcos Viegas. Marcos, how did you score it? Let me tell you, Kenny, this fight was really, really tight. I felt that at the very end, Devante Clark got away with the victory, 96 to 94, but round seven, eight, nine were really, really tight. Uh, it could have gone either way. I could see the judges scoring at a draw or a split for either or guy. We had a look at Devante with his one-year-old son. Devante, there is the unbeaten to this point, Sebastian Fundora. Let's take a look back, guys. Yeah, you're gonna see Jamonte throw in a left hand, three straight lefts over the top of Fundora's jab. All right, there's that right hook from Fundora. And there, uh, but you know, look, look, Clark was never gonna give up right here. He got hit, he, he came right back, he gave it right back. To Fedora. There's a beautiful little left hand from, from Fedora. And again, a nice, nice shot coming back from Clark. These guys, look, this was a great fight. They could have they could have fought for another five rounds, and I would have liked to have seen it. Here we go. Here's a yeah. shot, Lennox. Yeah, here's a shot by Clark. A look at the final numbers from Copy Box. Total punches landed and thrown. Clark landing 30%, Fedora 23%, and the power punches landed and thrown as well. Time for the decision to the ring, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Kyle Sheely scores about 98 to 92 in favor of Sebastian Fundora. 
Judge Tim Cheatham sees the bout 96 to 94 in favor of Jamonte Clark. And judge at ringside, John Mariano, scores the bout 95, 95, even a draw. The decision is a split decision draw. The fight declared a split decision draw. Let's run it back, and one more round. One more and how about the disparity? One judge scored it 98-92 for Dora. Wow. Second judge, 96-94 Clark, and then 95 apiece. You see, in this fight, you never know what the judges are looking looking for. To the ring, Heidi with Jamonte Clark. Thank you very much, Kenny. Jamonte here with Jamonte Jr. with the strong shoe game going on here. A split draw. Do you think that you did enough to win this fight? Uh, first, I want to thank God, thank Al Heyman. Thanks, Fox, for the opportunity for letting me broadcast my talent. And um, I think I pushed it out enough to get the win, but the judges seemed to the other way, so I can't really complain. I'm blessed. I'm still here. I ain't hurt. If they want to do it, we can run it back and run it back again. We can run it back again. I ain't tripping. It is. It is. You know, your, your opponent likes to fight on the inside, but this was definitely a battle of the jabs. What was, what was difficult? about him uh, you know was the size an issue uh, the size was a little bit difficult but we worked through it and we got through it so and i think we pulled it off so but the judges seemed the other way so i'm gonna go back to the lab and we right back to work i ain't tripping thank you so much Demonte. let's head over to sebastian the same question for you sebastian do you feel as though you had done enough to win this fight yeah i felt like i was the one putting in all the work uh this guy was moving a lot uh, when, when, the, when the fight was going on, I felt like I hit him with more jabs. I felt I got more punches on him. So. This is the first time you fought a, a southpaw professionally. You know, how did you feel and what did you learn in this fight? Uh, I, I, maybe, I, I, I don't think I learned anything from the southpaw aspects of the fight. I think I've learned more from the guy, a taller boxer, the, uh, how, how, to cut the cor how to cut the corners, cut the boxer off, and, and how to stop him move. Yeah. You haven't gone outside the sixth round. How did you feel in those later rounds? I felt good. Uh, we were prepared for 12 rounds, so we trained hard for this. Uh, seven rounds, I didn't feel like nothing. He said, you know, if you want to run this back, let's do it. What, what do you say to that? Whenever. We can do it tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sebastian. Kenny, guys. All right, thanks, you. Heidi. A uh, rematch, perhaps, in the future. Yeah, I think a rematch would be good. You know, like I said, it, you never know what the judges are looking for. They could have been looking at Pandora, the fact that he was pushing, pushing the fight and pressuring uh, Clark. And then you can look at the, the fact that the, the judges could be looking at Clark. He was moving around, he was, he was slipping, but he was coming back with some great punches, great combinations.